Okay, I think we're ready to get started. Thanks everybody for showing up. So we did send out one more version. Um, this just in the last probably 15 minutes, Dave Wilson went through and did some fairy dust on it. So um, let's, I need Basha as going to be the one I think to be scrolling through. It came out, it would have come out from Barbara if you're looking in your email. Um, so should we? Okay, are people ready to start going through it or do you all want to, is everybody ready to get started? All right, let's get started. Yeah, we sent one this morning. Has it still not come through? Check maybe, that you're connected to the internet and all that. Maybe just give everybody a couple minutes to get it. It seems like we're all still trying to find it. Okay. So maybe when people get that email, let me know so we can get started. Did Linda get it? Other people get it? Chris, do you have it now? Okay. Okay. I don't think I haven't had a chance to go through it either since Dave sent it out, but my understanding is his changes were formatting stylistic. Um, reordering. Okay. Okay. So can, maybe we can start walking through this, um, starting with probably page six. So we're on page six. Is there anything this, that's just what we added to the agenda and the people that we accredited who were new? Anybody see anything that needs to be changed there? And then at the bottom is some notes on the informational session with Ian. So I'll give everybody a minute to read through and make sure. Let's look at six and seven because those are all part of those informational presentations. Okay, everybody good there? Uh, how about through page, on page eight, I know I had a request to add a rationale for the season date. So we should talk about that. And then also the minority um, support for a slightly later date. So, go ahead, Chris. Can we go back to paragraph 18? Okay, paragraph 18. Did, did Canada abstain that vote? I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I, I think we got to maybe go back and we go really slowly. I know there's a couple things. I, I don't think we abstained that vote. Okay, let's check it. 
Are we discussing the uh, opening and closing dates now? No, we're on paragraph 18. I don't think we have stand that long. Do you have a vote recorded for that? I'm still trying to find it. Okay. And then there's a typo in 19A. Okay, we're trying to get 18, paragraph 18, vote corrected, and then we'll go to 19. Madam uh, Chair, sure. Linda, can we? Can I add uh, a part in there about the extrapolated data on 18? Um. Yeah, let's get the vote fixed, and I think we had said to note that separately. Okay. Um, I can work on language for that while we find that vote. I'm not sure people would consider. Linda, do you want do you want minor um, grammatical errors or spelling too, or yes, it was worth losing if I can finalize it. Okay, if it's if it's minor, we won't worry about it. If it's something that's going to really read weirdly when I read it to the commissioners, definitely flag it. Well, it's right there. Yeah. So so nineteen a, the Maddie was pointing out there, um, the beginning of this the second line there, sub substantial change that should be changes in the distribution. Eight a. How come my new new um, email says page seven? I have sixteen, and yours says uh, nineteen. There, am I missing another email? Thank you. There was an email sent this morning, as I said. Dave, Doctor Wilson made some additional corrections. Sent it to us just a little before eight and we sent it out. It took a while to get out. So look for that version. That's what we're working from. So did you get that? Yep. And did we find the vote? Did we come up with the vote? What, what did you do? Mine is just R. Oh, B2, of course, actually. This one is. That's not right. What? This process will take It shouldn't. We've done it almost done. No, no. <clears throat> it's not that it should or not. So, Jim, did you do you have noted down Canada's vote? I have the U.S. vote on that issue, but I'm missing Canada's vote on paragraph 18. No, I didn't have that one noted down because it's. How did we do that? Nobody got it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, my memory is we had three abstentions and the rest in favor. But something like something like that. Um, you know, once the word once the wording was edited, that it became more, you know, something Canada could could endorse. So we didn't abstain. So does that sound about right to you? And we'll keep um, looking. But yeah, no, that sounds. That, Chris, what was again? Sorry, Linda, I'm, I'm going deaf in my old age. You're going to have to speak up. So in paragraph 18, you're right, it was an abstention. I, I have that it passed in Canada, but I hadn't noted. I knew there were some extensions. I thought there were three, but I hadn't verified. Um, I, I'd be comfortable saying three abstentions. I, I think we were largely supportive, but I think there were some abstentions. So I, I, unless I hear it from others on the Canadian delegation, I've had some texts that we didn't abstain, we did vote for it. So I, I think we're good with what you're saying. Okay, so be no objections. Um, three abstentions. Okay, let's change it to that. And then we corrected that typo. Um, and then um, we had a discussion here and there's been a suggestion for this language. We, we had, uh, Sean had put some, uh, inf added some information to this discussion. We then said we should take it separately, but didn't capture it in the minutes. And that was that, um, conference board disagrees with increasing the TAC in a halibut regulatory area using only extrapolated data in the absence of a FIS or trawl survey. Lack of survey data does not provide the necessary current data, data needed to properly manage the affected area. So basically saying if we don't have a survey in an area that that area's TCY should not go up. Chris? Could you read, like, are we noting it or are we recommending it? What we, that's just a pretty, could you, what we're going to say in there? Could you put the wording up or, or? We could put it in CB notes. Objection to increase or concern with increasing the TAC in a halibut regulatory area using extrapolated data. How about just that? Can we put that up? Uh, can the lights be turned down? It's hard to see. Right under 18. Hey, Linda, this is Tom. Tom, this is Tom. If we, if we make that statement, are we sort of implying that we no longer trust the time-space model? Uh, I don't think it's going so far to say we don't trust it. It's saying that the TAC should not go up based solely on extrapolated data. That's what the time. Okay. Or All right. no, noted concern with increasing the TAC in an area in a halibut regulatory area in the absence of FIS or trawl survey data. Okay, sure. <laughs> FIS or trawl survey data. Okay. Hopefully my writing is legible. That's why I'm worried about legible logbooks. Okay, everybody, well, you already put that in up there. Great. Okay, that captured enough, Sean. Okay, everybody, good with that. Okay, anything else? Um, through that sort of lengthy uh, now paragraph 20. Anything? Okay, paragraph 21. Good morning, Linda. You went past it. 
Ed, John Muller with uh, ACDC. Um, on 21, it's implied but not explicit that um, you've largely captured my comments from yesterday. Uh, but I further went on that there's at least a, a hope and an, and an anticipation dependent on the, re the results of the current work being done at the commission, uh, more specifically the genetic and tagging studies going on there, that there would that would trigger um, uh, surveys in the area, um, I think is pretty profound um, or potentially uh, very profound findings with this genetic study. Um, and if indeed it needs to be um, viewed as an independent stock, that it would, um, uh, my, our hope is that it would trigger surveys um, to support that uh, new information that we may see. So I don't know how to how to word that. Um, I'm, I apologize for not getting you maybe some, some uh, more pointed verbiage on that, um, but I wanna make that point. So I, I didn't get that point really, but so my understanding was that you made these comments relative to catch limits and I tried to move this last night. Evidently it didn't get moved, but is this where you want it? Does it make sense in this section? Uh, maybe not, Linda. Um, and again, th what you captured there is is largely um, capturing our, our concern with this. So we want to be um, very supportive of that work at this point. So um, at, at any rate, um, but this is speaking to a motion, and the motion I think was on catch limits, right? Correct. You reluctantly supported a motion. So yeah, I put a note in last night to move this. So we need to move this. Yeah, I mean it's speaking to a motion on the motion, the U.S. motion on catch limits. So yeah, and then if you have specific edits to this language, send them to us, and let's get them up here. But we'll move on for now because I. I yeah, that's fine. I'm okay. All yeah, okay. What you were wanting change there. Uh, I, it would probably help to sh to make your point if you shorten this language so it just makes a clear point, okay? And maybe at a break, I can help hone in on that. I just wasn't getting enough of it with what you just said. But we'll move it to the right place and we'll hone it, okay? Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So... Now, can we go to fishing periods? And we missed getting any rationale in for the fishing periods. My memory was that the comments were that a longer season provided additional opportunity for fishermen and for direct marketers. Is that rationale we want to add? Then does that capture that, it? That's correct. We did discuss that, that the, it would benefit the consumers. Okay. Uh, consume, yeah, and direct. flexibility for the harvesters and processors. Uh, additional opportunity for fishermen, consumers, and direct marketers. Is that what you want? Okay. Hey, Linda. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the Americans didn't get to vote on the March 1st opener. Like, I don't know if. You know, we actually even opposed it all that much. It's just we voted for March 7th. They did not. They put forward March 1st, and then we didn't even vote or comment on it. So I, I don't know if you can definitively say that we said no to it. Well, that's because the March 7th vote passed. So if we had then voted again and approved March 1st, we would have. I mean, we can have a minority report I'm saying there were stakeholders who supported an earlier as well as a later date. Is that? Oh, it, it just might be worth noting that the Americans didn't definitively vote no on it. How about some conference board members? Because I've also heard we missed, you know, there were conference board members who supported a later date. So we can say uh, USCB members noted 
support or some noted some support for earlier and later dates. I think I think I when I spoke to this motion, I talked about we have a general policy within our organization uh, that we want as wide of opening as possible for uh, the reasons that I stated. And I think that that would reflect in if we'd had an opportunity to vote on the March 1st prior to the March 7th, I would have supported that, but we didn't. And so I wouldn't say that we were opposed to it at all. So I'm glad you're making that change. Okay. So U.S. Conference Board members noted a minority, I guess, Okay. Jerry okay. Christensen's got his hand up. Okay, hang out. Uh, U.S. Conference board is from you. Do you want me to edit on here? Or do you want my... No, you're editing. Okay. U.S. CB members. How about U.S. CB members noted minority support for a longer, uh, earlier, and a later season opening date. Okay. So we'll have. U.S. CV members noted minority support for both a earlier and a later season opening date because we had that. Okay, does that cover it? Between okay. maybe March 1st and March 7th. Later date, 15th. Right. So we had support. We, we adopted March 7th because that was the motion that was made on the floor that passed. But we also had people who supported the first and you supported the 15th. So that tries to capture all that. Okay, there's someone no, online. No, wouldn't it be there is U.S. support? It does say U.S. or it should say you, the U.S. Conference Board noted. Linda. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to make sure that it, it didn't say that the American side voted no on March 1st because we never actually voted on it. And right. That, this way, you know, the commissioners can read between the lines and maybe see that um, there is some support on the American side for March 1st. There's also some people that don't want that, but um, that's all. Got it. Okay. Linda. Linda. Okay. There's somebody online, I think, that Jim. Jerry. Go ahead, Jerry. Uh, yes. Thanks, Linda. Could you just scroll back up to 22? There's a, or what? Was twenty two? No, four. That's right. The, the 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 second part of that phrase says there are regulatory constraints that prevent the agency. That was not my understanding of what we heard. <laughs> there may be inconvenience, and there may be you know problems, uh, uh, administrative uh, or budgetary issues. But that makes it sound like you can't. The agency can't support an earlier date because it is constrained from doing so by some sort of regulation and i don't i didn't hear the explanation in that context not important particularly but it it just seems like a a an inaccurate statement how about logistical challenges that make that, it difficult for the agency yeah that's what i heard okay yeah. that would be much better okay let's change it to that thank you Thanks, Jerry. Okay, go ahead, Nels. For the uh, the fishery dates yeah, in the minority in the minority reports, are we also able to mention that there was support for the later date, all the way out to March fifteenth, not just to March seventh? Okay, just wanted to double check that was in there. Uh, I think what we got was minority support for both an earlier and a later date. Yes, for both earlier and later season opening dates. Okay, so. Just a comment, the received from PAB, the canneries are pushing for the 15 because of the Boston Seafood Show and for their benefit, but we have to look at it at also the perspective of the self-marketers side also because yeah so we yeah. voted on it we voted on march 7th right. we're just capturing minority we're not gonna gotcha. rehash every just, action just making sure that this clarified 
Okay, great. Okay, so uh, Chris, you had your hand up, or you? Well, I'm just. I I realized we're you know there was support for both an earlier and later season opening date, but that that's pretty like what does that mean? Like, do we want to bound it at least to comment that at least on the later opening date? I don't think anybody spoke past March fifteenth. Um, I, I just worry somebody can interpret that that it's something else. So I just wonder if we want to put in later season when we date in brackets E period G period comma March fifteenth for yeah. the later and earlier. I I didn't want to do the same like earlier and put in brackets March first. My point is I'm just somebody reading that would be like, well, you know, what are we talking about here? Oh, that's helpful. Let's do that. Can I add that? So for opening dates of March 1st, I mean, earlier March 1st, later March 15th, just what Chris just said. That'd be great. Okay. And did folks feel like, so looking at 26, where we supported the 6 a.m. opening time, um, did people feel like that captures the rationale well enough there? Allowing a full day facilitated access to markets and improved fishing efficiency. Anything else you want there? Go ahead, Chris. I would say fishing efficiency and opportunity. Just efficiency implies somehow that, and yes, it could be, it is more efficient. Some people talked about catching more, but it's also just the opportunity to Great. get a full okay. day of fishing in. Facilitated access to markets and improve improves fishing efficiency and opportunity. Okay. Okay, got it. And I, we could just cut and paste that to also apply to the later closing date. That's well, the, low, the other part of the closing date one was, you know, more it was picking up uh, gear. Gear retrieval was was more was was um, more opportunities or better or better opportunities or whatever for gear gear retrieval on the last day. I think what we're talking about there is what Robert meant when he mentioned that is the last day of fishing. Say something happens, you have the gear part. You know, you got a problem. If you're cutting off at noon, you're now you're really scrambling. Whether we got all day because we know things happen on the on the water, so it just gives you a full day of fishing, right? That that's what I think he was meaning there. Uh, you know, the day might go fine, but if you have an issue, now you've got the whole day. Okay, so we'll add and allow additional opportunity for gear retrieval. Does that work? I, I would just leave it with, like you suggested that okay. um, uh, it allows for efficiency, which I think would, you know, if somebody says it's like, hey, if there's a problem, you know, if you get asked about it, I, I would leave it the wording we use for the opening time. Okay. And then just explain it if asked. Okay. Yeah. I think Kareel noted the same opportunity or challenge. All right. So mortality limits. Um, it's now paragraph 30, I think. Any uh, corrections to that? Linda? Yes. Um, so on this section and then the tables on page 12, the numbers on the Canadian are different. And I don't know which one's really the correct one. So in your table, you have 34.83, but the motion says 33.27 in this section. Uh, in paragraph 30, I have for 2024, it says 33.27. Oh, maybe the correct, the new version is corrected. Go ahead, Chris. Sorry, I don't want to disrupt this discussion. I was just looking at, you know, we're working on paragraph 31 now. Um, I'm just making sure we go through this sequential. If you want to finish that discussion, I just want to talk about paragraph 31. And I guess probably 33. Uh, I think uh, I haven't checked the table, but do those match now with what's in the table? Page. 12 page 12 and no they don't match 
but that's what I'm saying. I don't know which is the right numbers, and it's both Canada and U.S. are different. But when you're in the description in paragraph 31, it has 33.13, and then here under Canada's motion in the table, it's 34.83. Do you, you guys know which of those numbers is the one is right for what you wanted? Let me just check something here quickly. <laughs> I think it's 30, I think the 3327 is correct there for coast wide. Uh, and then I think for Canada, the 6.10 is correct in paragraph 31. I mean, last year we were 36.97, take 10% off that 3.69 gives you 33.273. So I so, think in paragraph in paragraph 31, the numbers uh, are, are correct. I have other edits on 31, but let's resolve this number issue first. Okay, so the numbers in paragraph 31 are correct, and the table should be amended to match that. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Why don't you let Chris do his corrections on 31 and then there's the same issue on US and 32. Yeah, it should be 33.27. Okay, I think we got that. So, um, and then we also have different numbers in 32, Kathy, you're saying. So we have 35.22 in the action and the table. This is 35.33. So it should be 22, I think. And I haven't done the math to see it, but that's what they think. Okay, maybe while you work on math, Chris, you had another correction in paragraph. Let me get back there, 31, and I can try and make a note of it. What was your correction there? Um, <clears throat> I think when we were talking about it, it just it, it's in the third paragraph. In making this motion, Canada considered the coastwide regional. Uh, you want to scroll down there? No, it's right. It's there, isn't it? It's right there. Paragraph 31. Okay. Um, I just think that the continued decline at the coastwide level, I, I think also we were making the point that looking, our concern was just looking at what happened last year compared to this year. And I know it's, it might be captured there in saying continuing decline, but just saying the point, like where we've, what's happened in terms of where at, we're at this low when you you know if you take the low number right now you draw a line across it and look at where we've come from on these levels i just want to make sure that's captured in there um to so the continuing line at the coastline level um the continuing decline and, and i would say at the coastline level and the magnitude of that decline okay <laughs> Uh, over the over the uh, time series of the available data. Magnitude of that decline over the time series of the data. Yeah, thank you. Let's see what it looks like.
Okay, so we'll correct it in paragraph 31. Okay, then we have another correction in paragraph 30. Okay. Okay, we're just getting the numbers straightened out in the U.S. motion. And then we'll insert this. And then I have another one, Linda. Okay, stand by. Okay, so now going to paragraph 31, Chris is in wanting to insert uh, in that sentence, it's what the second sentence, in making this motion, Canada can consider the coastwide regional survey and the commercial fishery metrics, in particular, the continuing decline in the coastline level. And right there, we're gonna add and the magnitude of that decline over the time series of the data. Okay, how's that read to you, Chris? That's good, thank you. Okay. And then Kathy, you had something else in paragraph 32 or? Well, it's 31, 32 and those tables again. So if you go back to page 12 on the tables, it says for the vote tally, see previous paragraph, but nowhere either in the tables or in this section, do you have the vote tallies on the catch? Side. Okay, good catch. Can we add that vote, Telly? There's no vote tally for the U.S. vote on catch limits, either at the table or in the notes above. And we had... It's U.S. and Canada both. Yeah, we're missing those vote tallies. I have 30 yes, three no, and one abstention. Okay, so we're going to add those votes uh, by TCY recommendations by uh, it's page 12 that has the tables and the votes I have were 30 yes, uh, three no and one abstention for the US sign. And Canada on the US on the US vote or the U.S. motion was zero yes, 20 no. So then we also need to add the vote for Canada. So assume.
Okay, and the vote I have on Canada's motion on the U.S. side was one yes, 30 no, one abstention. I'm hoping people are checking me on that. And Canada was 22 yes, zero no, zero abstention. Go ahead, Chris. Okay, we recommended TCY mortality limits for the 2024 fishery representing a 10% reduction uh, from the 2023 reduction, um, I'd say reduction from the 2023 uh, mortality limit. So from the 2023 mortality limit. Or just TCY, I guess 2023 TCEY. So, yeah, from, I, I'd say representing a 10% reduction from 2023. Uh, TCUIs uh, to the 2023 TCUI distributed equally between contracting parties. So instead of with respect to the reduction from. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right, my numbers are getting different. It makes it hard. All right, so paragraph 31, 32, everybody good there now? Could we go back up to them, please, so we can see them? We got it connected again. So back to paragraph 31 and 32. You got it. Paragraph 31 and 32. Okay. Okay, so I just want, um, Johnny, are you looking at, John Muller, are you looking at the last sentence in paragraph 32 because that is addressing the 4B issue? And I think where I tried to capture some of what you had said in the discussion. So take a look at that. Um, any other changes to 31, 32? Okay, let's move on. I think Basha needs to have to move it. But I think this is going to be. I thought you corrected that. I think it's 35. <laughs> What, what's the number we've got there in 31 now? It's 33.3, oh, 33 okay. 33.3, Linda, I'm good with it. Okay, you so go. do you still want that other paragraph in there? I think we're good. Okay, we'll take that out then. But let's get the numbers right. The number in 31 should be 33.27. I thought that's where we landed. They, Chris said it was right in that language and we had to fix it in the table. So I think it should be 33.27, but I- It was 33.27, you brought it to 33.3.
don't know if we should round or not. Okay, so can we move on? So regulatory area perspectives. So this, there's a lengthy um, addition. These were from the rationale read by Jeff Kaufman on the U.S. motion. Chris, go ahead. Can we scroll up just a bit? So yeah, paragraph 33. Um, I, I don't think what's there is correct. And uh, uh, also it's missing a bunch of the points that we made up. The first thing is we did not, that implies that we said, uh, evenly distributed by regulatory area, and that's not what we said. We said uh, between the contracting parties. So supported uh, equal cuts between the contracting parties or equal? Uh, equal cuts of 10% uh, between the contracting parties of 10%. Okay. Did you say uh, of 10% from 2023 levels? Okay. Had you sent rationale that should have been added in here? Yeah, I did. Uh, and, the, the, and it was in the discussion. Um, we commented in response to the U.S. proposal that uh, the U.S. motion failed to take into account Canada's historic share. And that, you know, as outlined in a past IPHC paper, O32 biomass is a scientific exercise, while TCY distribution is a policy discussion that incorporates socioeconomic considerations. And also made the point that the MSC process evaluated management procedure that demonstrated 20% national per can for share for Canada met all the conservation objectives. So it would not create a conservation objective, a conservation issue. And we also noted that, uh, both Canada and the U.S. between the two parties have deviated from O32 biomass distribution or apportionment in the past, and the U.S. has deviated from it uh, even within their own IPHC regulatory areas. So I think that needs to be added in there. Do you have that written out, Chris? Yeah, send that to us. It, it was sent. It's in my in my email to Basher where I have the motions and, and the like. I can resend it if you'd yeah, like. Yeah, I can resend it. Okay, so. I assume there's also missing rationale from 34, paragraph 34. Yes, I'm just adding it to our process. Okay, we're adding in Chris's. Right now, we, where is it included? Is it all? In the one above. Oh, yeah, so that language is in paragraph 31. Maybe, is that right? That was a little different from what he just read. That was a different one then. So everything that Chris just mentioned is going into paragraph 33, is that correct? Sorry, say that again. Everything Chris just mentioned is going into paragraph 33, is that correct? 
Yeah. So that was the the Canada's objection to the U.S. motion. Their rationale for objecting to the U.S. motion. Chris, what was the language that you used when you used the word fail? Was it failed to notice your historic share or what was it in that part? I think it's, uh, sorry, fails to take into account Canada's historic share. Sort of in the middle of the page. Sorry, what's missing there is the, the, the point about that Canada and the U.S. have deviated from both 32 biomass distribution as, uh, when setting TC-wise uh, between the contracting parties and within the United States, within the United States uh, regulatory areas. Okay. All right. I guess once we... I would say TC wise between the contracting parties, as well as uh, within uh, between I, uh, US IPHC regulatory areas. Um, you got an extra B in between and. Um, as well between Congress, as well as uh, I would say the US IPHC regulatory areas. Thank you. All right, so I assume there are conference board members who have rationale that we missed for the US noted Following perspective that they, I, I'm not, I don't feel like U.S. stakeholders are paying attention right now. It would help if people were paying attention. So, okay, we've added this rationale from Canada on their objection to the motion from the U.S. Um, we don't have rationale for the U.S. motion other than specific to areas um, or for any language of your objection to Canada's motion. So if people have that, that you want to send to add here, that would be helpful. Yes. All I had last night was what Jeff Kaufman sent. Yeah, Linda. I uh, can go from my notes, but uh, would go ahead. I'll, I'll type up something for objection to Canada's motion and send it. Okay, and we can come back to that. Um, as, as far as support for the U.S. motion, if we're on to that yet, um, I don't know if I need to type it up and send it, but there was um, definitely conversation here about um, Dr. Dr. Hicks uh, suggesting that maybe, you know, if U.S. stakeholders wanted to step back and look at catch rates or CP, you know, commercial CPUE is as a metric of like where we want to go. Um, and that I think that there was, uh, there was, it seemed like there was a good amount of conversation about, you know, that the benefits of maybe doing that. Um, and that, that a decrease in harvest effort this year would increase catch rates in the future. <laughs> I guess I could I could type that up and send it in, I guess. Okay, I captured it, but I don't think Basha has it. So if you want to send it, it might make it easier. Um, so, okay, let's look at what's in paragraph 35. There's um, rationale points there for the overall motion, and then the rationale points for the area specific. And yeah, why don't you send me, or I can send it.
make sure that what you see there in those points are what you want in the report for each area and for the overall motion. Linda, can we scroll back up to the motion for the U.S.? So can you give me a paragraph number 34? Um, at mortality limits. 30. So paragraph 32? Yeah, that the 35.22 should be 35.33. That that's that it, may, yeah, that should be three three. That matches the table, and then then the table adds up correctly. Okay, I'm good. Sorry, I had to do some math. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Okay, so uh, any changes needed? I'll, uh, I'll also be emailing you there in just a moment, Linda. Okay, so there's a uh, change needed. Uh, this is card. So in 35B 2C, it says 032 weight per unit effort, 0% to say 0% change. And that should be 032 fifths way per unit effort, zero zero percent change. Okay, has everybody looked over those area specific rationale points and made sure they have in them what you want? Okay. I think Linda, he tried I'm to sorry. capture what people sent to him. Was that Jeff? <laughs> yeah, sorry, my mic's really loud today. Um, uh, Linda, under 4CD and E, which would be uh, the old 33G3, yep. says fist numbers are stable, and I think we need to make that modeled fist numbers. Okay. Or the space time model numbers um, are stable. That's it wasn't a fist so in um, G. E &E. Yeah, it's uh, G under 4 C, D, and E. And it's little triple I. And it should yeah. say modeled fist numbers are stable. Thank you. Okay, Chris. Okay, we, we scroll back scroll up. Back up. Okay, um, Chris, we'll take your comment and then we have to switch. Basha has to go to another meeting. So okay, just, you just, just scroll up to the top of this section. Keep going, sorry, keep going. Keep going, keep going. You hey, stop. 5.3, I know we had a discussion of distribution strategy, uh, but this is a discussion of distribution. I, we need. To, I know. I know this is following what's in the 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 agenda, but um, this wasn't. I, I think that title needs to be changed about just about. Well, in fact, this whole section is about U.S. distribution. Right. So in thirty five, it says the CB noted the following perspective shared by U.S. CB members. So what you're saying is. This well, I'm saying the title is the is the distribution strategy. Um, there was kind of a separate discussion on that, right? We had that um, motion that was passed. I just think this should just be uh, USA, distribu USA distribution. It's nothing in this section, I think, or, or uh, distribution and then leave it at that. And then if we have a section about the distribution strategy, 
because this is not a strategy. This is not. This is just discussing what should be done for 2024. It wasn't. Well, I think paragraph 34 is the the CBE note of the following perspective shared by the USA. Members from USA support distribution that aligns with best estimates of O32 Pacific Halibut abundance and area specific metrics. That that was sort of the distribution strategy comments that we had noted from USA. Okay, so sorry, which paragraph was that? Could you scroll to it quickly? That one that, that's highlighted. So it's under this. Yeah, it's probably not quite in the right place. That should Well, be yeah, it, it, because you're, you're, you're talking about one thing and then you move to another section called distribution strategy. If you're saying uh, what this following section is about the perspective shared by USA members. Right. So the regulatory area perspective should, probably should be distribution strategy. I, well, I, didn't wasn't there a motion though like you guys were going to develop a strategy with the staff and everything like that? Wasn't that's, that? I, that's in a separate. That happened later. Um, okay, but I, I mean that's the distribution strategy. I just think that that title is going back to it. It should be. It should just continue on from the. Um, I think the distribution strategy is that paragraph thirty-four. For the from the U.S. perspective, and I think so. I think the names are switched because the paragraph thirty-three is your distribution strategy that should be equal cuts between the two areas of ten percent. And then regulatory area pers. Maybe it's changing the title there. Okay, I, I guess say just when I look at it, five point two is range rec, regulatory area perspectives, and then thirty eight says the following perspectives were shared, and then you move to a whole new section. They're not they're not linked. Um, yeah, I think the part below that is actually the motion from the U.S. with the rationale for that motion. So we need to retitle that. Um, so, if you need to go, okay, we'll take a five minute break and we'll try to see if you can sort this out while you're done. Um, and hey, can Linda. Or someone. <laughs> I think in looking at the structure and listening to Chris's comments, <clears throat> all of the US, so the pages and pages of the the rationale, it seems like that should follow the the, um, the area recommendation because it really is rationale for how we're suggesting to allocate the TCEY. So right now, all the rationale appears first and then you get to the table. So it's, it's kind of um, an odd order. I think that's right. I think the, the notes at the top are the comments on the regulatory perspective and distribution strategy, and then we need to move those points down to correspond to the U.S. motion on catch limits or TCY. And I, is it better for me to just start moving things around, or how do we make that? No, I mean, I mean, we want to do it. Should I do it on my laptop and then? Oh, wait, Joseph will take over. Okay, all right. Okay, let's take a five minute stand down while we do the staff switch here and try and get this sorted out. Hey, Linda. Yes, Kathy. Just a marker. Um... Chris brought up a really good point. I do not find in these minutes anywhere our motion about the stakeholder for doing a harvest distribution strategy in Alaska. Okay, we'll get it added. Okay. Um, you want to send that to me? Are you talking to me or staff? Um, if you, I'm, I'm sure I have it in my notes. If you have it handy and want to send it while we work on this other thing, that would be great. 
I'll type what I have. Hopefully it's close. Okay, so just so people know, we did send out another draft. I think Chris pointed out that the sections on the motions and the coastwide perspective were pretty scrambled. We were kind of going back and forth between the two. So we've tried to just reorganize that section. Um, uh, basically, the section under mortality limits to reflect a little bit of general conversation that we had and then go into the motions. So take a look at that section. It's a little bit redundant with, um, you know, sort of a paragraph talking about the motion and then the actual motions themselves. But then the rationale is there. The minority comments are there. Um, Canada's objection to the U.S. motion is there. Then we have Canada's motion, um, U.S. objection. I, I don't know if Canada feels like they have all the rationale they want. So er everybody take a look at that mortality section and let us know if it seems to make more sense. And then we can go through it step by step once you've had a chance to read it. Mike would help. Okay, so let's uh, go to mortality limits um, section. Nothing above that has been changed. Uh, we now have reflected there in paragraphs 30, 31, I guess it's 32, which could all be one paragraph, th or 31 and 32 could probably be one paragraph, but we can clean that up later. Um, just sort of that coastwide discussion, it's very brief. Um, before we get into the motions. So any changes people want in 30, 31, 32? Okay, and then 33 and 34 between them capture the US motion. The TCUI limits are in the table and then the rationale is below that. So, Any changes to paragraph 33? This is sort of the last time through, so make sure you're paying attention, taking a look, and tracking. Everybody happy with what's in paragraph 33? 
anybody online? I can't see folks. I guess if you're online and you see something or Jim, if you see a hand I'm missing, please let me know because I can't really yeah. see right now. Okay, and we have the vote there. That looks like a little O instead of a zero and in favor, we could fix that, but that's detailed. Okay, and then we have the, that rationale area by area below that. Well, first there's coastwide, then there's area by area for the T for the US motion. Where is, we don't have any of the CBSFA guys here, huh? Does anybody know I have a where question. they went? Linda? Yes. Um, I noticed the rash, the, the area by area, it's all red, but it's only because it was moved, right? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'm hoping CBS Bay guys have read through this because this was their motion. Okay. Everybody good with that? And then um the minority report is at 36 of those malcolm and you know the few people who abstained um or voted no and then there's the um comments from canada in objection to the u.s motion or why they didn't support it their rationale for not supporting it below that is Chris in the room? Yeah, I'm here, Jim. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Chris. Uh, just in paragraph. No, I was just, asking, I was just wondering if he was in the room again. Yeah. No, I know. He has his hand up, so we're going to let him speak. Uh, paragraph 37, just uh, 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 indicating that I would say this motion, I'd say the U.S. motion. Okay. That the U.S. motion? Yeah. Okay. And I would say in the last sentence, um, just grammatically, Canada and the U.S. have deviated. Have deviated? Yeah. Got it. Great. Okay. Good. Everybody good with the U.S. motion? Okay. So let's look at Canada's motion then is next. First, it's sort of the general language, and then it's the, or the supporting language, and then the TCY recommendation. We tried to follow the same sort of structure as above. Um, and then there's the US rationale for voting against it. That look okay to everybody, so paragraph 40. Uh, Chris? Just wondering about the language here in paragraph, what is now paragraph 34. The U.S. Yeah. Conference Board recommended the following TCY mortality limits. However, when we scroll down to Canada's motion, um, or is it is it in, a, in the above? I'm just trying to... Yeah. Well, so one, it might say noted and one, so it might say recommended. Is that what you're looking at? So we should. Yeah, it just seems in Canada, we're only noting it, but the U.S. is recommending. Let's so let's make it recommended. So it matches. So, I mean, in Canada, it's the first one it's noted in the second place. It's recommended with Canada, too. So one is, I think Dave changed it to noted a motion from Canadian CB members. We could say. Well, they're the, they're it just seems that, that 38 is the rationale, 39 is the actual motion. Okay, so you want recommended in both? We'll just do them the same way, the U.S. and Canada, whichever way. Let me just take a quick look, sorry. Or actually, we can't say recommended there because it's the whole CB didn't recommend it. And I think that works because one is the conference board noting that Canada made the motion, same as above. It's conference yeah, it's board. okay. I can I can live with that. Thanks, okay. Linda. Okay. So I think it's that's fine. Okay, and then at the bottom of this is people feel like the rationale includes everything you want. At the bottom of the two motions, 
uh, or the two TCY motions. So looking at paragraph 41, this was Kathy Hansen's comment about all the comments that were in uh, relative to the unconstrained and guided sport fishery in IPHC regulatory area 2C and 3A and urge the commission to acknowledge all the concerns. That was that conversation we had. And then directly below that is the motion. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Chris. Sorry, I just noticed paragraph 38 uh, typo near the end, probably a result of my poor typing uh, when I sent it in. Uh, last sentence, 2014 year class is only slightly above best average. I would say slightly above average. Take out the word best. No, it's actually, it's not, the, it's not above average. It's the 2014 year class is, is, is really is at best average. So uh, it was certainly not, I don't think the 2014 is above average. So I think I was saying uh, is at best average is only is at best average. Does that, um, I'm just looking at Dr. Stewart for, cause I saw some sort of conflicting language and reports of that year class being above average versus at best average. So <laughs> let's make sure we verify that. The 2014 year class is above average or at best average? At best average, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, at best average. Okay. All right, so then back to 41 and 42. Those are those two motions that were made. One speaking to the comments we received about unguided sport and one to establishing a stakeholder driven process alaska areas to work on distribution within alaska so hopefully we captured that linda go ahead kathy um on 42 we had specified that it, we wanted it done before the am 101 meeting <laughs> in the motion Okay, stakeholder focus on, and that, so maybe we just add a uh, little four to be completed prior to AM 101. Yep. I thought it was a U.S. conference board recommendation, not the overall conference board. We can put that in. I think the uh, Canada supported it, but we can say U.S. conference board recommends. Yeah, we all just abstained on that vote. I feel yeah, like I think we abstained that vote, didn't we? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that looked good. Now we have. Did you get the timing? Yeah. Okay. Is that good, Kathy, where that got added? Yep. Okay. All right. So are we good on mortality limits? Awesome. Okay. So let's go to the IPHC regulatory proposals. Should that say 2023, 24? Right. Okay. 23 is kind of behind us, but okay. All right, so I don't see any votes reflected here. I guess we did no objection. Anybody? I think we just noted them. Go ahead, Jim. No, I think we just, like you said, we just noted them and didn't have any objection, so we didn't really take any votes on it that I will remember. I think we, A3, the electronic logbook was certainly supported by US Conference Board. Okay. 
Okay, we'll we'll check minutes on that one and add. <clears throat> oh yeah, there we have that. Okay, so that is there that A three vote. Okay, and then the limits. Everybody, let's see, we have any 2A folks here? I wanted to make sure we do okay with, um, it's now paragraph 53. Hey, uh, Linda, we, yes, we, go. we, we go ahead. Linda? Yes, go ahead. Is that Tom? The second, yeah, the se on 53, the second sentence says CB also recalled the MSC simulation identified that harvest in IPAC regulatory area 2A and excess of FIS in abundance creates a conservation concern. That should be does not create a conservation concern. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So this is the, um, the Macaw one, right? Does not create a, I'm sorry, yes. A conservation. Yeah, okay. Rob, uh, when you finish that, there's uh, Robert Hockman sent me a. I think that he he made some comments that he thought that didn't get into this one, so I'll I'll read them out when um when we're when we're ready. Okay, I think at the end of that paragraph we have a funny from the stock perspective. Yeah, there's a hanging there's a hanging yeah. phrase in the end of that sentence. All right, thank you. Okay, Chris has his hand up. Go ahead, Chris. Um, I think what this sentence is, this paragraph is missing. The, we made the point that we have concerns with um, an allocation that's based on an absolute number and not a percentage, uh, as it doesn't reflect changes in abundance. And we also made the comment that <clears throat> the MSE, in addition to showing what's there, also showed that uh, uh, the simulation showed that a 20% share for Canada did not result in a conservation concern. And then there's the point uh, Jim's made about Robert's comments, but he can make that. So um, the Canadian CB members noted uh, objection to fixed number, is that? Expressed, yeah, well, objection to a fixed number. An, uh, uh, no, sorry, an allocation based on an absolute number rather than a percentage as it doesn't um, reflect changes in abundance. You wanna just send it to us? I'll write it up and send it to you, sure. That would help. Okay, and then did, um, Jim, did you say you had other language for this same paragraph? Not other language, it's additional language that Robert Hawkins meant when he talked about um, I think the proposal said that there are, you know, U.S. treaty obligations, but Robert made the point that Canada also has treaty and reconciliation agreement op, um, obligations to Canadian First Nations as well. Um, so he he made a he made a specific point of that that it's you know Canada has those issues as well. Yeah. So should we note that as a separate paragraph or as part of this paragraph? How do you want that? Whatever, whatever, whatever works best. Do okay, we let's do it as part regularly of this one. put things in rationale that don't really have anything to do with the motion? Is that I'm I'm just not sure on like rules this, this of wasn't order here. Really a motion. This was comments on a regulatory proposal. Okay. Um so I think we'll just reflect I minutes. Mean, yeah, we can reflect the comment that Canada also has treaty obligations that may be brought before the commission in the future. Treaty and reconciliation. Okay. Yeah, Canada I may also have treaty. And reconciliation. Treaty and reconciliation. Well, maybe, in, maybe it's semantics here, but I don't, I don't remember hearing it be an objection. I thought it was a concern. Um, yeah, I, I, we noted concerns with an allocation because it wasn't a motion. Well, 
you're going to send us the language. I'll send you the language. And I'll try and incorporate Robert's comments as well. Linda, I'll try and incorporate comments, the ro comments Robert's made as well. Okay. So you're going to send for all of that. Okay. All right. Great. Then we won't worry about capturing that. Just send it and we'll go back to it. Okay. And so we'll go back to that one once Chris sends it to us and we can include it. Uh, anything, any other comment on 56? Oh, I might have just messed these up. Sorry. 55, 56. Okay. So Chris is going to work on that language, but on incidental catch, bycatch section. included the information that Dr. Stewart provided there. That was it. Okay, and then. It, it has 41 for abstain. I think it, was it? Yeah, on 60, four. change that to four or two, whatever it was, but 41 is the... Oh, that's yeah. where we have the absentee messed up. That's supposed to be four. Although that's a pretty big number still. Do you have that one? So this was a motion. So 60 should note that a motion was made there. It doesn't show up in that language. Uh, so it's a recommended. Recommended the commission recognize. So let's do that. The CP recommended. 60. The CB recommended that the commission recognize that ground fish and then go on so that it pops out that it was an action. So the commission acknowledge? That the commission acknowledge, sure. Yeah. That's Dave's preferred word. I would have said recognize, but Okay, so 60, I'm just trying to make it stand out that it was a motion, so we're just adding language there. Okay, and then other business? How does that look to everybody? And review of the draft, blah, 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 that's what we're still doing. And then I guess I would just ask people to look through the list of names um, below. Make sure your name is spelled correctly. Your acronym is right. If there's anything in that section that's not correct, that we fix. Excuse me. Anybody see any? Um, Mistakes in that section? Yeah. Go ahead, Nels. That was Jim. Okay, go first. I've got Nels right now. Uh, my last name's spelled wrong. It's E-V-E-N-S, not E-V-A-N-S. So Petersburg Vessel Owner, you are E-V-E-N-S. Okay. Petersburg Vessel Owner. Okay, we got another one. <laughs> wow, we really got you messed up. Okay. <laughs> okay, so 
Hello. Um, and where are you? What number? West Coast Fishing Guide? No. Wildlife. Oh, okay, it's 26. Yes. Okay, Thank you. BC Wildlife Federation. And then, I don't see an email. Right. West Coast Fishing Guide, Pat and her, and he was actually there for so, the Canada. Let me get Dave's right. So do we have you right now? Okay. Okay. Sorry, Jim. Go ahead. So West Coast Fishing Guide's twenty-five. It's okay. got an asterisk that Pat Ahern wasn't here, but he was. Okay. So get rid of the asterisk. All right. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. I was here. <laughs> you count. All right. Anything else? Krista got her hand up. Krista, go ahead. Chris, do it. Are you there? Yeah, I'm. Can you hear me? We got you now. Okay. Yeah, my name's not on there at all. So I know I was accredited, and I don't. I looked for a different list, but there's not a different list for that. So. Yeah, I don't know where to. Do I go on the Canadian list? Um, you yeah. should be on the Canadian list and remind us of your um organization. It's. It'll go. <laughs> Probably go number one, actually. <laughs> Alligate Fisheries LP. Okay, but it needs, but it should be on this list. So we have Atlegay Fisheries Society, but there should also be Atlegay Fisheries LP. Yep. Okay. It was on the spreadsheet one. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Chris, oh, and the acronym for that, or? I think you just did AFLP, yeah. Okay, and then Chris, Krista Boyce? No, C-H-R-I-S-T-A-R-U-S-E-L. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, we have everybody. Oh, go ahead. Uh, on forty-one, it should be uh, just a small correction. Yukon Delta Fisheries Development Association, okay. and then it changed to the acronym. Yeah. So development after fisheries. Okay, so Yukon Delta Fisheries Development Association, and then it's DFDA. Perfect. Thanks. Great. Okay. Uh, got another? Go ahead, Ben. I just don't see my name up there at all. Oh. I don't know if that's because I was newly accredited, but that's uh, finest at sea seafood producers. Yeah. Chris, did you send us that language to add? Okay. Right, one more. Okay, hang on. Did you get that one? Right here. Okay, go ahead. So uh, I'm I'm a new conference board member, and it it lists me in the uh, new members. There's no there's no space between sport fishing. Not that that matters a whole lot. And then I'm uh, I'm listed as a observer, but not on the conference board. I don't know how that. Um, works. and you're finding... Larry Phillips, American Sport Fishing Association. You are listed down below, but you have an asterisk. Oh, United. No, which one? Which number? Uh, which which number are you? The number, because it says I'm just an observer. Larry Phillips on page. What's, what's the organization? 
American Sport Fishing Association. Okay, so it should be, we're just, we're missing you all together. No, I'm, yeah, I'm there. But I think it should be on the conference board, shouldn't it? Sorry, what was I missed that comment? I just said that that Larry showed up in uh, you had it you had it up on the screen in a new section of new participants. Yeah. Okay. I think what happened is the people who were accredited didn't get added to the list at the bottom, so we'll make sure we get them all. Yeah. No, that's Thank great. You. Okay, so you got a note of the ones the other ones to add. Okay. Okay. Um, on number ten, there's a there's a T before the C, just on my name. That's it. Number yep. ten. Is that what you said? Or nine? Yeah. Number nine. nine. Catch Association. No, just Richie. Just up, got it. Oh, Richie, you got it. Okay. Okay. Anything else? We're just, we have one. Uh, Linda, sorry. Ooh, this is loud today. Over here. Go ahead. Uh, we spell organization with a Z, not an S on 33. What? Okay. Number 33, change the S to a Z. The S? An organization. That's just like that. Okay. <laughs> All right. The new organization is to put at the beginning so that this is we are called the commission. Oh, okay. So, so okay, what? It's a new organization, so why are we also at the top? This is already accredited. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the way um, Basha had this set up, the new accreditations were at the top, and this was re accreditation in the bottom list. So, anyway, we'll, we'll make sure everybody's in there and right. Chris, go ahead. You just go to the list for the Canadian stakeholders. Okay. Uh, let's just scroll down slowly. Oh, I broke it. Sorry. Okay. Scroll down slowly. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, well, I think we're okay. Thanks. Okay. Oh, I think Lyle's listed as an observer too. He's listed. He's a he's for Vancouver Island Longliners Association. But I think if you go to observers, he's listed there as well. Okay, so I guess some people signed in of observers and they've been duplicated, but we'll go through and straighten that out. Okay, uh, so I think the last piece is waiting for that language from you, Chris, to put in unless, oh, and then. I've emailed it to, back to Joseph, so hopefully you've got it now. Okay, okay. Let me know if you don't. No. Um, uh, it goes in to, uh, was it paragraph 43? The regulatory amendment addressing, no, 53. Is that right? It was going in paragraph 53. 
about the 2A 1.65? It would be in paragraph 53. Yeah. I sent you the full comments. I don't think what you have there reflects um, what I consent to believe because we may have, I think the point is that we already have indigenous treaty and reconciliation commu uh, commitments and that more are gonna be forthcoming. Sorry, I, I copied the first part of it as, as well. I, I would take out the last sentence in the in what is now paragraph fifty three. Take out the first part of paragraph fifty four, which duplicates fifty three. Sorry, I just cut and pasted the whole thing, and start it from. Uh, Canadian Conference Board members noted. So we did have U.S. CB members that noted here there were socioeconomic impacts. I, I don't know whether anybody on the U.S. side is paying attention and sees that missing and wants to suggest that. Brian? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to read it. If they, I mean, people stop moving things around. <laughs> it's hard to read it when they keep flipping the screens around. Are we good to wrap up here? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. That's good. I'm, I'm, I have no problem with it. Okay. Any anything else that needs to be corrected, added? Okay, we're all happy. So we're going to clean this up, just formatting, and it'll be presented to the commission that we are on at 130, 130, 130. Yeah, 1.30 we'll be reading the report to the commissioners. So last chance for any edits. Okay then I think we're ready really for a motion to adjourn if people are- I think we have to adopt it first. Oh yeah, we should probably adopt it. Okay, motion to adopt first, this report. Oh, I think we should add at the bottom our appreciation for the secretariat and all they have done to help put this report together. Can we add yep. that? Yep. Okay, that's it.
that in last night. That's right. Good. Okay. All right. So now I need a motion to adopt. I have one question before we adopt. Uh, who was that saying they have a question? Oh, go ahead, Creel. Might be a little late. We, um, for electronic monitoring, that we never included the cost, but I believe that might be too late now to put that on the. I don't think we talked about electronic yeah, monitoring. We, not, yeah, the EAM logbooks um, for the. Electronic the, yeah, logbooks? No, the EAM logbook for the uh, IPHC. It's an electronic logbook. Well, not the, 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 electronic deck, logbook. Yes, the, the logbook. We, uh, the cost was never discussed. Right. Yes. But it is voluntary. Yes, I understand. So, but I don't think we can add it if we didn't discuss it. Yeah, I understand. It. Just okay. noting for next session. Okay. And Chris, did you have a question? Okay. All right. So then I think we're ready for a motion to adopt. Move to adopt. Tom, second. move to adopt. Is there a second? Brian, second? Okay. Whoa, we don't have that many people left. Is there any objection? To adopting this report. Anybody online objecting? And I'm just going to do, or do you want to do them separate? Will the U.S. any objection to adopting the report? Any abstentions to adopt, adopting the report? Okay, it passes on the U.S. Jim, you want to call for Canada? So for Canada, any objections to passing the report uh, on in the Raise your hand in the room and raise your, your hand online. Don't see any online. Any abstentions? Same process. Passes unanimously. Okay. I think now we're ready for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Thank you. A second. Thank you. Seconded. Any objection to adjourning? <laughs> okay, we're done. Thank okay, you all. Thank you very much. Thank you to the uh, chairs for all the hard work. Really appreciate it. And to the staff for the help. Also, just one thing I'd like to note, uh, I'd like to just say thanks to the committee, that uh, the industry committee that worked for the 100-year celebration. Uh, Linda Benkin, Linda Kozak, uh, Rebecca, Bob Alverson, and I don't know if I missed anybody, but Really like to say thank you, uh, especially to Linda Kozak, did a lot of the heavy lifting. So thank you very much. I think it really contributed to making that a success. Thanks, Linda. Did a good job.